Welcome back. I'm in conversation with Mr. S. Ramadurai, the chairman of the National Skill Development Corporation. Uh, Mr. Ramadurai, if I may ask you, what is India's biggest governance challenge today? Is it providing uh, jobs to the large number of youth, the youth bulge we talk about, but what about jobs for them? Is it corruption? Is it fighting terrorism? Is it building our external image? What is India's biggest challenge today? I think the biggest challenge is the population and the youth population which this country is having. It could be a big advantage in terms of the potential of these youths to produce something which is unbelievable, not only for consumption within the country but also for the world through capability, skills, education, whatever you call it. The second scary is if it does not happen, what kind of a social problems it can create in terms of unemployment of the youth. When the country has consumption capabilities as well as export capabilities across sectors of the economy, across sectors where the world is looking at, we have the human potential to relate to the world at large, including India for that matter. But the challenge is uh, how to convert this potential to actually jobs. Uh, so basically, I mean, you are now heading the Skill Development Corporation, Skilling India. It's an, uh, a huge task. Now, because there are no benchmarks, we don't know what kind of a skill. We don't have a baseline uh, study in the entire country. We don't know really. Uh, so, and people generally, that mindset problem, oh, you have a university degree. Oh, this guy only has a degree from some ITI, Industrial Training Institute, or some vocational institute. So, are you facing this problem? Are you yeah. aware of this? What I call this as the biggest opportunity or the biggest human resource exercise in the world. If you are looking for some uh, cookie cutter approach in terms of solutions from abroad, we are not going to get it. The local solutions with local capabilities and application for a global context is yeah. what we are looking for. Because of the IT industry and the technology inputs we have got over the years and technology gets created from India instead of technology being bought out from outside, we have the ability to scale up and ability to skill a number of youth very quickly. If we can address the millions of youth problem, then we get into areas where we can contribute to the rest of the world. That's the kind of mindset we are trying to say. The second challenge which we have is the advocacy because from the supply side, the blue collar work or the work which you do with your hands has always been considered inferior in this country. We have got to bring back some of those capabilities like what the Germans do or the Swiss do or the Americans do or uh, Australians do or the New Zealanders do or the British uh, people do. Where vocational education in addition to the general education is a way of life. Vocational education to general education, movement equivalence and general education to vocational education should be very seamless. So when you have to create these standards, when you have to create the opportunities in multiple sectors, 40 today, I think the detailing and the attention to detail and uh, putting your head down and creating that is what we are trying to do. How are we going to look at it? Is it skill and education or is it skill versus education? No, it is skill and education for very clearly. Some people may choose the skill stream immediately after the 10th or the 12th. Some people may say, I want to go after the 12th for a skills completely in a BWOC as an example, mm -hmm. or a diploma or a, a certificate course, or as part of the university education where they are in a BSc, BCom, BA, whatever it is, they also have what we call as the skills uh, as a um, curriculum or a course which is not mandatory but are we are we in that means are we going to see a uh, change in the educational system at itself because there has to be educational institutions for suppose after 10th one uh, somebody wants to go directly into skills training where does he go the number of itis are very few the condition of the itis you know better than me uh, it's totally in you know, a very pathetic nobody takes it seriously uh, I'm not generalizing, of course, but there may be uh, some good well, ITIs. I think I, here I would like to step in to say that number one is the ITIs are completely moved to the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. They are getting a complete resurgence in terms of modernization no, of the getting, ITIs, okay. plus also adoption of ITIs by the private sector. Even if you take Northeast as an example, yeah. in each of the seven states, we have adopted seven or eight ITIs or more is going to be scaled up where people like Tata Motors, people like uh, other uh, Bosch, people like uh, some of the other manufacturers are all part of that who are adopted and we have created an ecosystem of a sort. Okay. Hands-on experience within the ITI itself with a modernized ITI where we have created a service station or a retail uh, shop which does all the kinds of things which the youth get trained as they get the theory portion onto their system. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to first focus on the ITIs and modernize them. Second is standardization I talked about. 
connect the polytechnics and the college degree together, so that it is an ecosystem of a sort. And then every region, whether it is northeast, whether it is Jammu and Kashmir, yeah. whether it is some of the tribal affected areas or tribal areas, the local skills, then tools to connect, for example, the prior learning, for example, weavers, for example, welders, for example, plumbers, how do you connect them to the market through recognition and certificates. Last but not the least from the demand side, how do you make sure that each one of us who experience this kind of a service pay the right wages at the right price. But who fixed the wages? Uh, I mean, uh, don't I you think, think we'll market, be, what about market forces determining yeah, the wages? Ultimately the market forces determine, but when you say a shortage, for example, today there is a driver shortage. Yeah. When you say today there is a plumber shortage, it is the demand versus supply where so a good plumber can high, demand. This is very high in the thought process of the government of India today. Absolutely starts with the Honorable Prime Minister at the top. A separate ministry has been established. State skill missions have been established and they are all getting connected together. So that means there is a synergy between what we call what the Prime Ministers make in India and the skilling India. Absolutely. A make in India cannot be successful unless the skill in India takes off because the skills are the ones which will enable you to make in India which connects to your global quality and the global supply chain. So I think these are all connected together. Are you in favor of something like vocational universities, whatever we mean by that? I think you've got to give a complete flexibility. Don't just go by a standardized approach. If you want to start a vocational training and you want to be a training provider, sure. You want to set up a university because you have a bigger vision, then we must encourage it. Existing university wants to start vocational courses, let's encourage it. Existing ITIs wants to upgrade and then do the vocational education through private sector participation, let us do it. I think it is a combination of all of this which says that let a thousand flowers bloom, that is what is going to make a difference. Absolutely. Let a thousand flowers bloom, that is basically ultimately the vision. On that note, we shall go for another short break. Stay on, we will be right back.